In this video I'm going to show you how to create a carousel that also allows navigation between the different images and indicates which slide the navigation is currently up to. So just to show you the elements on the page, we have a dynamic panel here with an image in it that's going to be our carousel. I also have a dynamic pan panel here with some circles in it. This is going to be our navigation. I'll just close out of there. I've got a bit of text here because uh, I'm going to use that just to check what our variable is at each stage. Um, and I've just got a panel behind it for design purposes. We'll set up our carousel dynamic panel first. So I'll double click on it. You can see that in state one, we have an image background. I'll just zoom in on this so that you can see it more clearly. We have an image in the background. So all I'm going to do is create four more states. So I have five states and five different images in the background. So to do so, I create a new state and I'm just going to duplicate the state I have at the moment. And I'm going to do that for each one. And if I duplicate the last one, it will uh, add a new number. And so I have states one, two, three, four, and five. So let's just go in and change those images. I'm now in state two. I just go over to my image, click select, and I choose a new image. And I'll do this for each state that I have. Clicking on the image, you can see I've got stretch to cover and I'm centering it as well in the alignment. Now, always, if it's saying it's larger, may cause the application to run slower. It asks if you want to optimize it. Remember, this just optimizes it in the workspace. Um, you really should be optimizing it before bringing an image into Axia. Oh, and it is slowing down, as you can see. Here we go. Okay. And the last one, state five. We'll just change that to another image as well. I'll choose this one here. So we now have a dynamic panel for our carousel. Each of the states has a different image in the background and these are going to be the five slides of our carousel. Now we can set up the navigation. So I have a dynamic panel and it's got five circles in. So I just double clicked on the dynamic panel to go into it and we've got five circles. So what we want to do is have a um, hover state. Uh, so we have add a style effect like mouse over and we'll go mouse over style and we'll change the fill color to white and you can see that happening over here and we want that to be on every single one of our buttons so what I'm going to do is open it right click copy now of course I could do this by um, <laughs> copying and pasting this button five times but I'm going to do it this way so over right click paste and we can see it's got that style uh, add the style effect mouse over style right click on the mouse over uh, paste there we go uh, add the style mouse over style right click on mouse over style and paste and you know for one particular style like a fill change this doesn't save you much time but if you had a lot of different things to add this actually uh, saves you a lot of time so we have that mouse over style there. We, I'm just checking that it's on each one of them. Okay, uh, I'll just save this of course. Close and let's test it because I want to make sure we're getting it right at every stage. And there we go. We have a mouse over effect showing us that this is interactive. Now we want to set up the buttons so they actually do something when people click on them. So I'm going to go to new interaction, click or tap, set panel state. We choose the carousel DP dynamic panel and this is why I name them so it's nice and easy to find them in your target. Uh, and when we tap on button one we want to go to state one. We want to animate it in so we'll slide left. Now another we don't need any other options there. I'm just going to click OK. Uh, 
and we'll do this for each of the buttons. We'll go click or tap, set panel state, carousel DP, we're on button two, so we're setting it to state two. And we'll slide left to bring that in and we'll just keep on going with that. So remember, because we've given these the names button three, state three, it's actually quite easy to match them up as you're adding these interactions to each of the, um, whoops, hang on, I've done the wrong one there. Oops, go back, click or tap, and we want set panel state. I accidentally hit show or hide but I immediately saw that was a problem because it wasn't giving me the same interface. It was giving me different options. So I could go back and fix that. Okay, so we now have all of these buttons set up so that they are interactive. So let's test this. I'll close out, we'll preview it. And I'll just check that tapping on these buttons uh, actually takes us to the different slides. So let's extend this a little bit. Here we go. Yep. There we go. It's taking us to the different slides. So we know that that works. So the next thing that we want to do is have the slides changing automatically. So I want this to happen when the page loads. So I'm clicking on the background, new interaction, page loaded, and we can set the panel state again, carousel DP. We want this time to say next. We just want to take it to the next one and we click on wrap from last to first, make sure that's checked so that once we get to slide five, it will go back to slide one again. Uh, we're going to slide left again. Now we have more options here. Repeat every X amount of seconds. Um, I'm not going to do that at this stage um, because when I start my interactions, it will actually break this. So instead, what I will do is I'm going to initiate this one first. There is reason for this, but what I'm gonna do is so that it doesn't slide immediately when it loads, because if I preview this, it's just going to see how it just slides out of the way. So instead, what I'm going to do, going back here, is I'm gonna do a new interaction uh, no, sorry, I'm going to do a new action and right down the bottom we have an option of wait. So I can actually wait two seconds before it initiates this. So I'm just going to drag this up here if it will let me. Come on, let me, let me, let me. Oops. There we go. Okay, so now when the page loads, it's going to wait two seconds and then it's going to go to the next slide. So let's preview this and check that it's working. And there we go. Now the problem is it's not going to do anything from here. Um, now if I had set that extra option that it does it every two seconds, it would do that. But like I said, once you start adding navigation in, um, it actually will break that. So this is why I'm doing it this way. I'll just close out of all this so I don't have all those extra pages open in my browser. So instead, what I'm going to do is tell it to change state once the state has changed. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So what we want to have happen is when the page loads, it waits two seconds and then it moves to the next slide. Once the slide changes, we want it to wait another two seconds and then change the slide again. So I'm actually going to put these actions on the carousel dynamic panel itself. Uh, the reason for that is because then when we start navigating from pane to pane, from um, slide to slide, it will then trigger the next change, which is what we want to have happen. So our, um, our interaction is for when the panel state changes. So we choose panel state changed. First, we want to wait for two seconds so that we get a good look of that beautiful slide. 
Then, oh, sorry, not a new interaction, a new action. So we're adding it to the same interaction of panel state changed and the action will be set panel state. This time we have the choice of um, the ones we've named, but we also have this widget. This in programming always refers to the element that you're putting the code on. So uh, I'm just going to choose that, but you can choose carousel DP as well. So I choose the target of this. The state is going to be next. We want to check that it's wrapping from last to first. So once we get to the fifth slide, it goes back to the first. Uh, we're going to slide that left. And now I'm going to open the more options. We want to repeat this every two seconds. So 2000 milliseconds. And we're going to delay the first state change by 2000 milliseconds. 2000 milliseconds being two seconds. So if I put that on here, this means that once it's activated, it will just keep sliding through until the next um, instruction or input from the user. So I'm just going to click OK there. Let's go and test this to see it's working before I move on. Okay, I'm just going to zoom out a bit so we can see that. There we go. We can see that it's moving automatically, which is nice. So we've still got our rollovers working. What happens when I click on one? It takes us to the first slide. Let's wait to see if it then goes to the next one. There we go. Let's go to the fourth slide, fifth slide, second slide. What happens after two seconds? It moves to the next slide. So that's all working. Now the last thing I want to do is have the navigation automatically change as these slide through. So when it's on the first slide, this one will be um, highlighted, second slide, third slide, so that the user can not just uh, have active interaction, but also have that kind of passive interaction where they're looking and they're getting feedback from the system as to which state it's up to. And this is also why I've added this text here so we can change that and we're going to use variables. Now there's probably a hundred different ways I could go about this but I want to demonstrate one of the strengths of Axia which is the very high level of sophisticated interactivity that you can have with it uh, using things like variables. Now we're going to add the variable. I want to do it on the carousel so it's going to be triggered by the same interaction of when the panel state changes. Let's zoom in so we can have a look at this in more detail. So I'm adding a new action. And if I scroll right down to the bottom, you can see we've got set variable value. That's where we add it. We want to create a new variable. So I'm going to add a variable. Let's add it here. And I'm just going to call it, um, let's call it slide. Okay, so we've called it slide. So our target is slide. What are we going to set it to? We're going to set it to, um, let's scroll down, the state of a panel. Which panel? This panel. Uh, so we're setting it to the state of the panel for the widget this. Okay, now we need to do this before all this waiting game happens. So if I choose that, I can scroll it up there. That way the panel state changes immediately. It sets the variable to this. How can we tell that it's changed? Well, this is why I've added the text in there. So I'm going to add another action again within the panel state changed interaction. And this time we're going to do set text. We're going to change the text here. So I'm choosing the text widget. Uh, what do we want to set it to? We want to set it to text and we want to find out uh, what we can do here. It's called current state at the moment. We need to insert a variable and it's going to be our slide variable. So I can get rid of this default text and we're just going to have slide. Okay, let's zoom out again. Let's save it and I'm going to preview and in theory it should change this every time the slide changes. So let's preview it. We start with current state. State 2. Uh, it's waiting two seconds. Let's go and fix that right now. So I'll go in here and see how it's down the bottom of our, um, our little stack. We want to change it as soon as we set the variable state. So I've moved that above the weight and you can move your actions around that way. So let's try that again. 
And there we go, state two. State three, let's jump to state four, jump to state one, and we can see that that is working. Now we're going to use this variable to change this down here to indicate which slide we're up to visually. So here we need to set up our carousel nav DP so that we can trigger these changes. So you can see we're in state one of the carousel nav DP. We want to do the same thing that we did with our carousel dynamic panel. We want to create different states so that it can go through each of those depending on what slide we're up to. So what I want to do is duplicate this five times. Again, if you duplicate the last one in the list, you get that lovely one, two, three, four, five um, numbering system. So we've got the same buttons, they've got the interactions on them already. It's really important to set up your interactions first so that it can click through to the right uh, slide before you're duplicating it into the states because otherwise you're having to go into five buttons on five different states and add those interactions. So this will save you a lot of time. So in state one, we want this button to be filled. So I go to style, I go to fill color white, and there we go. Then we go to state two, and we do that for the second one. We change the color, the fill color to white. Then we go to state three, and that way each state is matching one of our slides. Uh, again, the fill color is going to be white. Now I'm using the same color for the automatic um, indication of where we're up to and the rollover for the user, but it's up to you if you want to have them different. You know, do some user testing, see if that makes it easier to understand how to interact with it. So now we have the different states for our buttons. Now we're up to the last action we need to do. If we click on the carousel dynamic panel again and go to our interactions, we're gonna add this to our big stack of actions here. So we're adding a new action. I'll just zoom in again. That'll make it much easier for you to see. So this time around, I'm adding the action and I want to set a panel state again, but this time it's for the carousel nav DP. Um, and this time the state, I'm not setting it to next, I'm not setting it to a particular state, I'm setting it to a value. And we click on the FX to get our variable. Insert variable or function and we're gonna choose slide. And I'll just take away that one so we can see we've got the two square brackets slide, two square brackets, and that indicates that's what it's going to change the state to. So going back over here, we're setting the value to slide and let's animate it in. Let's fade it in and fade it out. I think that's gonna look rather special. Um, I'm gonna move this so that it happens before we change the text. Okay, so now let's see if this works. I'll click preview up the top right. And we've loaded the carousel. We can see it's automatically changing as we wanted it to happen. It's indicating the slide that it's up to. And we can also interact and choose a slide to go to and then it automatically changes after that slide as well. It goes to the next slide. So we've managed to create a navigation um, as well as the carousel, as well as feedback to the user to say which slide it's up to at any one time. And we've used variables to do that.